It's Friday night. We get a break in the action, so let's take a look at the West and how the teams are stacking up. Taking a look at Oklahoma City. If the playoffs started today, they'd hold the number five seed. Of course, they're looking to build on that. Of course, there's the Timberwolves. They're much further down in the standings right now. And I think for Minnesota, they've had such a disappointing season. Even when they've gotten a little bit of momentum, they haven't been able to keep it going. And when you talk about inconsistency, I think a lot of it has to go to the players because ultimately they're the ones that dictate how they perform. And checking out Minnesota's opening lineup. Beasley is out there with Russell. Then it's Carl Anthony Towns. And it's a Kogi in at the three slot. And for the Thunder, Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. This Paul is out there with Gilgis Alexander. And it's Dort in at the small forward. And for the Thunder, a lot of the assistant coaches leaving this past summer. Greg, how much of a concern is that for head coach Billy Donovan? Possibly a sign that Donovan could be on the hot seat in OKC. I mean, three consecutive first-round exits. Donovan on the final year of his deal. The clock is definitely ticking. Beasley with the steal. Here's Russell and the slam dunk by Russell. Boy, deceptive athleticism that Russell has for a point guard. This young man is sneaky in his ability to get up. And so it's Paul bringing it up for Oklahoma City. It's a three-point game, and the Thunder can't hang on to the ball. This game coming after a loss against the Jets. Marlins, Noel. Terrence. And now just over a minute played here in the first. And that one's good. Russell. Oh, great ball movement there. They're having trouble stopping this run. And the more trips they continue to come up empty, the more the pressure builds on them. Here's Schroeder, and it's sent back by Russell. Well, I tell you what, his teammates love seeing this. So do I. I mean, when Russell is able to block a shot, that's a big bonus. Let's it go from the wing, and the basket by Akogi. You know, you're going to have success when you can start out shooting 80% from the game. So early offensively, they've been great. That's the way you like to start. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Billy Donovan gave me a few minutes facing one of the most devastating scorers in the league in Carl Anthony Towns. Coach knows that slowing him down somehow is critical to securing the win. Kevin, that is a tough assignment given Towns is a wide array of offensive options. Thank you, David. Thunder have gone two or three here to start out the game. Towns with the steal. Pass break, Minnesota. Oh, oh that was oh, terrific. My goodness. The steal then right into the fast break. Towns with excellent awareness for his age. Very mature player, despite being a young buck. And the last two years, Carl Anthony Towns getting a rap as a bad defender. Uh, Clark, do you think that's fair to say? You know what, Kevin? I don't think it's as fair as it once was. Uh, he's not nearly the defensive liability he used to be. And he's better defensively one-on-one. -on -one, and I think he's improved in his ability to switch and rotate on smaller players. Defensively, giving up far too many open rhythm looks. And to battle back, they've got to shore up the defense. I mean, there's no other way to come back from a deficit unless you play good defense. Timeout is called first of the game for the Thunder. Mark, we have seen so many great players in the history of this terrific game, but in your mind, who is the best to have never won an MVP? Wow, you think about some of the names on that list recently or not too um, long ago, Patrick Ewing, um, Scottie Pippen, same era. Um, how about going back to John Havlicek, a former Buckeye and all-time great with the Celtics? Elgin Baylor, one of the first uh, high-flying forwards that I recall, one of those really creative three points. Um, do-it-all type forwards. Jerry West and Dwayne Wade right in that mix, too. Man, those are some lofty names that didn't get an MVP. And pushing it up again is Minnesota, again in transition, drains it from beyond the arc. Eight points for Beasley. And guys, what do you think about the hustle stance for Minnesota? They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnovers. Something else they've done right so far from the get-go tonight is, is run. I mean, so much of their offense has come off the fast break. 
And, and once he got to the 10, I, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. I'm deep. Hernan Gomez cans it from downtown. Yeah, they built up this lead three points at a time. And I like the strategy. It's a great strategy. Bury those threes early, and it'll open up the inside for them later on. Here's Ferguson. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Noel with it. Now guarded by Towns. And it's out of bounds. And they say it was last touch by Towns. And a new group in here for the Thunder. There's 48 seconds left to play here in the first. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Didn't think that was going to go in. Bernie Gomez has got six. Oh, this is the kind of start they were hoping for. Yeah, shots falling. Off to a very good start offensively as a result. Inside, Adams. And he banks in the lane. They know he's looking for him. So it's easy to see why Paul's teammates love him. Beasley outside. To the paint. Paul's shot is off. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. A Kogi for three. Good, and that's Russell picking up the assist. Three. Russell's got his third assist on the night. Knocked away and stolen by Russell. Jacks up a three. And another three for Minnesota. Boy, improving as a two-way threat. It's big when Russell is making an impact on both offense and defense. Here's Adams with the end of the first quarter. And what a blowout already in this one. Minnesota on top, running away with this one. And back. Chris Paul, an elite defensive player, uh, a student of the game for sure. Uh, the Steelers thing is just... You hear about the... watching film Greg it reveals itself in many ways and, and learning guys habits what they like to do gives him a knack for when to go after steals without hurting his team and if you're just tuning in we've got a wide margin on the scoreboard but uh, plenty of time left for a comeback and quite a position here for the Timberwolves to be in what do you think guys coming in hot they were sharp from the perimeter right out of the gate well, the player and ball movement has been excellent. Finding space, operating in space, and when they've gotten open shots, they've knocked them down. On the court for the Timberwolves as our second quarter is underway. They've got Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley out there with D'Angelo Russell, and it's Hernan Gomez in at the power forward position. Burton's checked in for Gilgis Alexander. Pass to Nader. Some nice passing by Oklahoma City here. Here's Burton. It's tipped. Fast break, Minnesota. Shot is good off the back rim and in. Bernie Gomez has got eight points. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. And don't leave out the coaching staff here now. I mean, their game plan has been perfect. Passes it to Baisley. He kicks it to Paul. Here's Nader. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Back to Paul, down to five on the shot clock, and stolen by Russell. The Timberwolves, another fast break chance here. And the basket by Akogi. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. And, Greg, it's hard for me to watch this. I mean, the defense practically giving them those shots. This isn't a tough case to crack. If they want to put an end to this run, they'll need to start getting back on D. And it's Paul with the ball for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Still looking for their first basket since the first quarter. To the wing right side. Six on the shot clock. And that's a foul called on Malik Beasley. That is his first foul of the game. 
and the young Timberwolves head coach Brian Saunders. Son of former Minnesota coach Flip Saunders. About as great of a pedigree you could ask for as a young coach. Well, guys, you've heard me talk about the DNA when it relates to players. It's the same with coaches. I mean, Brian has grown up seeing his dad coach at a high level, the late Flip Saunders, one of our favorites in the business. He spent his whole life around basketball, so he has a great way with players and a real good understanding of the game to a modern-day approach for a young coach. Great job of crashing the offensive glass. He stayed with it. That's hard-nosed, tough basketball. Well, Thunder have gone 0-3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second quarter. Here's Dort, covered by Beasley. The pass to Gallinari. Oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. Towns wide open. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Towns has got nine. Yeah, this looks like a pregame shoot-around with all the threes they're allowing. So far, we've seen them be a bit careless with the ball. Simply put out of control. This is how they played thus far. They're going to have to reel it in and show some more discipline. Coming on the floor for your Thunder, Mike Muscala. Merlin, Noel. 151 left in the second quarter. Here's Schroeder. That one a little long. Boy, you can just see the frustration growing on their faces. Nothing going their way. You know, guys, no denying it's been a rough patch here. Three. I think they've got to run whatever is best in their playbook to get a good shot. And stolen by Russell. And that one drops for him. Russell's got five points now in the quarter. Guys, I tell you what, feels like everything is coming easy to him. Just taking what he sees and capitalizing. They're getting beat up pretty badly out there. And I don't care what anybody says. You can't keep the status quo. If it ain't working, you got to make some changes. Muscala, the pass to Schroeder. Five on the clock. And so Oklahoma City again turning it over. Offensively yet from them in the second quarter. Diallo, he's checked in for the Thunder. For Minnesota, they've gone 8 of 9 in the second quarter. Very nearly perfect from the field. And it's Towns on the follow. He's got four minutes missed. And he's got excellent timing as well. And did a good job beating everybody to the ball. Tipped away. And now Minnesota on the fast break and the basket by a Kogi. And when you get this kind of shooting from him, 100% from the field, they're going to be tough to beat. Now here's Diallo for by Beasley. And already his third foul. It's got to be time to get him out of there probably until the third quarter. Oklahoma City shooting their first free throws tonight. The first trip to the strike in this one. And team free throw numbers really about as good as you could ask for around 80 percent on the season yeah in general they've been very solid i mean free throw shooting isn't something they've had to worry about too much this season guys and towns gets it to go and their balanced effort at both ends has hushed this crowd yeah you said the key word there balanced i mean their big lead owes as much to their defense as their offense. And the whistle blows on the backcourt violation. He went over and back. All you have to do is point to their turnovers this quarter. There's a reason the scoreboard looks like it does. That's been the culprit, the turnovers. I mean, T.O.'s, those kinds of mistakes, have really kind of drained their confidence to this point. Towns. That's his first personal foul. 14 foul. Substitution on the court. Pass to Gilgis Alexander. Looking to end the run. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And you know, on the deep. All right, David, thank you. And stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. The first half was all about Carl Anthony Towns. He had 16 points, two assists, and one steal. In their previous game, he had a performance he said he wanted to put... 
And that should do it with the second half about to begin. Let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back. And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. Colonel Anthony Towns has been sensational. He's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate within the first few quarters. You know what? It helped that they had a few guys with very hot hands on the perimeter, too. The Thunder shooting a pretty pitiful 25% in this game. Offensively, they can't get anything going. Well, Clark, if you were a coach on a team, what would you want to see from a guy by the end of his rookie season in the NBA? You know, Kevin, I won't be specific because I think it's more general in my estimation. Owning his development, whatever that means, embracing how he's going to get better. If it's a particular area of the game, yes. But understanding the professionalism of work ethic, and developing good habits and really owning that. That's what I would want to see. Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Chris Paul is out there with Gilgis Alexander. And it's Dort in at the three. That's Billy Donovan's five as we get going here in the second half. Hernan Gomez. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Russell's got assist number nine now. Wow, what an effort here tonight. And Gilgis Alexander's got the ball here for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Beasley comes with the double team. Down low. Here's Dort. Can't hit from in close. I'm a fan of anybody who defends that way. I mean, they weren't about to open the door and just allow him to cruise in for a layup. That makes three in a row to start the second half. Beasley's gone five of seven from the field. That's uh, over 71% actually. And Adams kicks to Gallinari. Oklahoma City moving it around. Paul against Russell. Pass to Dort. Six to shoot. And they get it. And the shot no good. A bit short. Starting slow in this half. 0 for 3 so far. And that one drops. Yes, sir. Akogi's got 16 points. They are on fire right now. That's four straight mates. On its way from Beasley for two, and again it's Minnesota converting. Wow, five straight buckets coming out of half. They are rolling. The Thunder have gone 0-3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second half. Beasley comes with the double team, and the turnover again by Oklahoma City. They're scoreless since the first half, and the Thunder going with a whole new group out there. Timberwolves have gotten every shot to drop since halftime. They're five for five from the floor. And you think about the two best talents in Wolves history, KG, obviously, and probably Big Cat. I would not disagree. I mean, KG is a Hall of Famer. The Cat, Carl Anthony Towns, has been terrific early in his career. The rebounding and scoring, the versatility at, at that size between those two guys. Boy, it could have possibly been like the Admiral and Tim Duncan. Well, maybe not quite that good, but really good. Hey, whatever adjustments they made at halftime, they are working to perfection. You know, they came out of the locker room, revved up the gas pedal, and haven't slowed down yet. Schroeder looking over the floor. And pushing it up again is Minnesota again in transition. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. Having a lot of trouble stopping the three-point shot. And they're not making up for it with their own shots from deep either, so that's a double-edged sword there. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by. And there it is for him. And that's now six points for Nerlens Noel. And with a merciful bucket, he snaps a terrific run by Minnesota. Took him no time at all on that one. Guys absolutely feeling it. When Russell heats up, showtime. Shooter passes to Ferguson. Here's Noel. Here's Muscala. And the rejection by Towns. Beasley with a clean look. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. And that's 20 points for Beasley. Exactly what you want from your point guard. Nice dime to the open teammate by Russell. 58 seconds left in the third. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need the basket. 
And now the Timberwolves on the break. And here's Hernan Gomez outside. Count it. And he's now 8 of 9 from the floor. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist totals, heck, they've been clearly the better team. Kicks to Beasley. Passes it to a Kogi. Fires from the wing. And there are the Timberwolves with another bucket. And, and just a great job of controlling that defensive backboard, then getting out in transition. That's been the difference. Seven straight fast break points, Greg. They've got the defense gasping for breath right now. Minnesota's gotten all four of the three-point shots to go down since halftime. They're lighting it up here. From deep, Hernan Gomez. And another three for Minnesota. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Boy, it's been a three-point barrage. They came out gunning and have not stopped. From deep. And he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves holding an unbelievable lead as the... And let's take now this moment to bring up our State Farm assist of the game. And, you know, you can always count on him for at least a couple of these pretty assists over the course of a game. And this one, a thing of beauty. It sure is. I mean, he's a maestro. Great vision, terrific IQ, everything. you want in a point guard and with the fourth quarter upon us time is running out for this game to become competitive all right now a chance to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade fourth quarter action all fueled up and ready to go so on the floor for Minnesota D'Angelo Russell out there with Beasley then there's Towns and it's Hernan Gomez in at the four and that set them apart today, guys. Their success with the mid-range. Simply taking advantage of what the defense has given them, and they've really made the most of it. And it's out of bounds. Oklahoma City able to retain possession. Now in the lineup for your thunder, Stephen Adams. Here's Paul. Paul. Hey, Clark, the NBA moved the presentation of the MVP award to after the conclusion of the final. Do you like that? Yes and no. I think you have two separate awards. You have you could have a playoff MVP or a finals MVP, which we have. And then you have a regular season MVP. The MVP is for the body of work done during the regular season. So I think there should be a clear separation between the two, quite honestly. So, uh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> At least you're honest, Clark. Sinks the three-pointer. And Gomez has got 27. And, and really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Yeah, and they either have been unwilling or unable to take that shot away. And Paul gets it to go in. You know, it's really quite remarkable how well Paul operates on the inside. I mean, he's not just a perimeter player. I mean, if he can get in tight, he's going to do it. And Beasley gets it to go on the assist by Russell. And that's now 22 points for Beasley. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. If it's working, keep working. That's what I say. Keep the pressure on. A different look for Oklahoma City. Alan Ari, he's checked in for Adams. And Shea Gilgis Alexander subbed in for Chris Paul. Here's Gilgis Alexander. The pass to Nader. Some nice passing by Oklahoma City here. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. And a moment now to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the Timberwolves. Well, it's been an outstanding game for them in the open court. Their fast break points really stand out. Yeah, and also the way they've been able to generate points off of the turnovers that they forced tonight has also helped. Looking at who's out there now for the Timberwolves. Jake Lehman comes in for Josh Okogie. And it's Evans in for Beasley. Oh, such a field shot there. The floater. Evans passes to Lehman. A three. And another three for Minnesota. He's just stretching him out. The defense has got to do a better job of staying attached to him. Yeah, especially with the score being what it is. I mean, you've got to tighten it up on deep. 
to the inside. Uncovered. Count it. And this offense is in a perfect rhythm. And you can see how they're finishing their plays. Boy, this is borderline ridiculous. I mean, every single attempt finding the bottom of the bucket. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Evan. Coming on the floor for your Thunder. Marlins, Noel. Deontay. Here's Noel. Pass to Nader. Not loose. It's stolen by Hernan Gomez. A three ball. And it's Noel with the rebound. For Oklahoma City, they've gone two or three from the field to get the fourth quarter start. Here's Baisley. He's been up and in off the pretty assist. Outstanding distribution there. I mean, what impressive passing ability. And here's Evans outside. But they'll get another chance. Yeah, clearly a foul of frustration right there. Not his best moment. That's Obviously, no one on their team's happy right now, but you shouldn't be taking that frustration out on your opponent with a poor foul. And the three ball is good. So many of the plays they're running designed to create opportunities three. from deep. Well, you know, that's exactly their plan here in the fourth. Work to find space behind the arc and then bury some threes. Muscala hits the bucket. You have to love the unselfishness on display there. Excellent passing. Here's Evans. Got a piece of it. Stolen by Evans. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Timberwolves. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And a milestone win for the season. This will push their victory total to 20 wins even. And guys, it feels like a mini miracle that they're finally going to take one in this four-game season series. When in the final contest to finish out the year, still a, a subpar one and three against the Thunder. And you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for D'Angelo Russell. Well, his defense was tremendous tonight. Really, really high level. He was a pest, forced the opponents into a lot of turnovers. They get a hand on it. Pushing it up. Here's Lehman. And there are the Timberwolves with another bucket. And it's just competing. You know, giving your best when it matters most. Yeah, you know, once they got victory in their view, a huge injection of energy and a great run to finish it off. Stops, pops, another possession, another assist. That makes 15 assists. He's been one step ahead of the defense all game long. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Here's Dort. Dishes it to Noel. And it's blocked. No one near him. And again, it's Minnesota converting. They just blocked out the noise, kept on grinding, and this is their reward. Boy, a fantastic performance. And I'll tell you something. I mean, you get roadkill, that's always a challenge in the NBA, no matter what. And they got it done. Eight seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Shoots from the elbow. Count it. And this is how you want to come out of the half. Prolific and efficient. Boy, I like the disposition and attitude since halftime. They're patiently looking for good shots. And so it's the Timberwolves taking care of business here. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says...